In the words of Eric Bischoff, I'm back and I'm better than ever. And no, I don't mean me. That is the words of Celtic, or I should say elect chairman of Celtic. I was about to say Celtic chairman, not quite yet, elect chairman of Celtic, Peter Lawwell. He has risen like the Undertaker, once again returning to the boardroom of Celtic Football Club. Ladies and gents, Peter Lawwell is back. Emergency live show, emergency podcast, if you like. Yes, we're going to talk all about it, we're going to get your guys' opinions, we're going to discuss the statement released by the club today as Celtic announced their new non-executive chairman. Yes, not quite. So I need to change it again, he's not even chairman-elect, or elect-chairman, or whatever phrase it is, he's actually non-executive chairman-elect. Very specific, non-executive. We're going to try and discuss it all. I want to make this stream a bit more conversation-driven with you guys, I want to hear your opinions, because... As expected, this news has divided the Celtic fans. It has raised a lot of concern. It's raised a lot of different opinion. And for some, it's welcomed news. Um, and, and we're all, you know, entitled to our own opinion. We're all entitled to feel um, our own thoughts towards this appointment. Peter Lawwell is someone who, of course, served the, the club for a long, long time. Um, some were happy to see him go. And some are happy to see him back. So we're going to try and get into it. Um, I see Alistair making a comment very early on, early on saying he never left. We'll get on to that. Did he ever really leave? Did he? Did he? I have a sneaking suspicion he didn't. You know, I think he was always kind of there in some capacity, but we'll talk about it in some capacity. Ryan McGinley joining in the chat as well. Hello, McGinley. Nice to see you. By the way, massive shout out to Ryan today who <laughs> made it, just just made it to the press conference today. I nearly, I nearly fucked it for all of us. I had the link for the... Um, the Kobayashi uh, press conference announcement thing, and uh, I forgot to send them it. So you had to source it from someone else because I'm a clown. But fair play to Ryan. Uh, I have got, just checked my emails, and I've got the footage from said press conference. So make sure and keep in track with the Celtic, uh, the Celtic the Thunder podcast Twitter page, and you can see Ryan's question to the player later on. I'll post that there for you all to see. Um, but anyway, hello, good evening, nice to see you. I don't want to waffle for too long, it is a Friday night after all, and if you're spending your Friday nights with me, then I really do feel sorry for you. But I appreciate you nonetheless, I like you all being here. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, this will also be on the channel for anybody who may miss it, or that may have just tuned in, whatever, you've not missed anything so far, but yes. Just to kick things off, a couple of donations, Ian Fleming, thank you mate, thank you, I appreciate it once again. Hi Ryan, I'd rather have the Undertaker. Do you know what? So would I probably. I think I'd rather have the Undertaker in the boardroom of Celtic. And uh, P Plexi Blocks with a $5 donation. Thank you. Energy prices forcing all back to work to pay for the heated driveway. I just want my Celtic back already. Hail to the hail. I hear that. Hail to the hail indeed. Shout out David Hunter. I've not seen you in a while. How you doing, sir? Um, right, let, let's get into the statement that was released by Celtic this afternoon. We'll try and dissect what has been said. I'll give my opinions to the appointment and then I want to get you guys involved. I've also... If you haven't seen it, on the chat, I have left a poll for you all to vote. Now, it doesn't... Yeah, it does show me. It shows me how many people have voted, so all get voting if you haven't already. There is a poll in the chat. Are you happy about the return of Peter Lawwell? Yes or no? There's a poll there. I'll be getting all your opinions. We'll be looking at the positives and the negatives, um, however many there is on each side. Uh, and we'll be trying to discuss it as level-headed as we can. However, I think you can all assume what my opinion is to, to kind of start off anyway. Um... Right, let's get this statement up. I, I, want to, I want to read through said statement that was released today uh, by Celtic. It was, funnily enough, it was not posted on Twitter. It was a, a statement that was released on the website and not posted on Twitter. Why was it not posted on Twitter? Well, I think you can take a guess at why, because the comment section would be full of abuse. Quite simply, and whether you agree or not, that's cold hard facts. It, it, it would be filled with abuse. Celtic is pleased to announce the appointment of Peter Lawwell as a director of Celtic and its new non-executive chairman. Peter will take up his role from the 1st of January 2023 following the retirement of chairman Ian Bankier. Peter returns to Celtic as non-executive chairman 
after previously being Celtic's chief executive for almost 18 years, a position he retired in the summer of 2021. It then goes on to blab on about the trophies that we won uh, under um, Peter Lawwell, which we don't need to rehash. We know how successful we've been over the past 20 years or so. Um, following his retirement, Peter has continued as a director of Celtic Football and Athletic Company Limited, representing the club as a board member of the European Club Association. And Peter Lawwell commented on the matter by saying, As a lifelong Celtic supporter, it's a great privilege to be asked to take up the position of chairman, chairman, having already been part of our great club for nearly 18 years. These are exciting times for the club and I look forward to contributing to the well-being and success of the club. Our objective, as ever, will be to grow and further develop the club across all areas, led by an ex excellent chief ex executive in Michael Nicholson and chief financial officer Chris Mackay. The club has a high-quality management team in place yada 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 Michael Nicholson comments uh, talking about how he's looking forward to work with him Ange Postacoglu comments saying it's fantastic news for the club that Peter will be taking up the role of chairman he was instrumental in bringing me to Celtic I know the love he has for the club and I know that his wealth of experience and knowledge will be invaluable to us all as we move forward together I would also like to wish Ian and his family all the very best for the future some closing words from current chairman and, and, and chairman who's about to leave Ian Bank here and and there's your statement, Bob's your uncle, Peter Lowell is back with a bang. And let's be real, let's be honest, I've just turned my camera off, what a clown. Let's be real, let's be honest, not a surprise. If you're surprised by this news, then I, I wondered why, because this was coming. Um, at the AGM, they deflected answering the question of who would be the next chairman of Celtic Football Club. And I think that was down to the fact they didn't want to give the audience in the room the time or place to complain about it being Peter Lawwell, should they have decided to. I think from the moment that Ian Banky announced that he was stepping down as chairman of Celtic, the rumour started straight away. The favourite was already Peter Lawwell. And the expectancy was it was going to be Peter Lawwell. It was only a matter of time and they had to get this news out before January 1st. So it is, you know, probably a good time to do it in, in the midst of the World Cup break. They have announced it um, now. And you can take the, 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 the statement in whatever way you like. I'm going to give my opinion in a moment. Uh, Blake Owen, thank you, very generous, £10 donation, I really do appreciate this lads, thank you very much, um, Peter Lowell was a banker slash businessman, focus was completely money, made this profit, yes, but it shows a lack of connection to the club and the fans, club became complacent, also lost out on some crucial deals, right, so thank you for your opinion Blake, we'll be getting back into all of your opinion as this stream goes on, as I said I want to kind of um, let this stream be dictated by your guys thoughts, whether they be positive or negative, but I quickly want to give my opinion, I am, I'm not exactly pleased and you can, you would assume that, 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 that Peter Lawwell is the new chairman of the club and do you know what, it's not even for the reason that you would expect, it's not for the reason that it's Peter Lawwell, it's, well it is, but it's not for the reason that he was here in the past and this, that and the next thing happened, the Covid season, it want rid of him completely, yada yada yada. It's not necessarily that. The reason that I'm disappointed that it is Peter Lawwell who's taking the role of non-executive chairman is because I wanted fresh blood, I wanted new ideas, I wanted something that would help move the club forward. Now I really do understand, I, I understand why people are happy with Lawwell. Well, do you know what? I'm not, but I can accept the facts that over the past 20 years, he was in a role as chief executive officer um, where we've seen great success. We won so much. We made fantastic money. We were run really well as a business while we watched our neighbours across the city go to the wall. You know, we were run really differently, run incredibly well to the point where we've not had to think about financial issues. And I can understand the positives in that as Peter Lowell, the businessman. However, what I did want to see was something new, something fresh, something that kind of matched the vision that kind of Ange Postecoglou talks about in the AGM, the direction of the club moving forward, the evolution <coughs> of Celtic Football Club. Peter Lowell, to me, isn't a part of evolution. Peter Lowell is devolution, it's going backwards, it's resulting to, to old names, familiar faces, which let's not beat around the bush, have held us back in the past. We were incredibly successful within our bubble. We hadn't taken the stride that we should have over the past 20 years. 
Football has changed. Football's climate and football as a as a sport and environment has changed drastically in the past ten years. However, Celtic, on a wider scale, haven't changed that drastically in that past ten years. We haven't won a European knockout tie since Peter Lawwell got that top position at the club when he was CEO of the club. We haven't won a European knockout tie. That, quite simply, is embarrassing. Talking about watching our neighbours go to the wall, we also watched our neighbours make it to a Europa League final last season. That is something that Celtic should be working towards as a football club. And people like Peter Lawwell are the reason we've not been able to make those strides as a football club. They, they are the reasons that we have been penny-pinching we have been stuck in certain times and places. And ultimately the reason that Celtic probably haven't made a bigger mark on a European stage. He's done a lot of work recently and it speaks about it the statement how he's been a part of the European Club Association. He's been involved heavily there. Peter Lawwell, I hope, is coming back to take on this role as chairman with an ambition to be an even bigger club in that European Club Association. To be a bigger name, to be a bigger presence. Because Celtic are nothing there right now. They're nothing. You know, we are a massive club. We are. We're huge. But we don't have the rights to to, to be entitled or, or brag or anything because we've not made a mark in European football since 2004, 2003. You know what I mean? We've won big games, but we've not won a knockout tie. We've not went a European run. We've, we've been let down continuously, and a lot of that has been down to things that were led by Peter Lawwell. Ultimately, 10 in a row was lost down to people like Peter Lawwell. And... and it is more just annoying to me that we're not looking to change along with what happens with the manager. We've brought in Ange, who has revolutionised us on the park. He's took us into a, a different era. And I feel like if there was a proper interview process, if there was a proper identification process for bringing in someone who could match that, there is certainly someone out there. Celtic's a massive club to be at. Celtic is an ideal destination for any businessman, for anybody who wants to be the chairman of a company. I don't think it had to be handed to someone who's been on the books for years and someone who's best pals with Dermot Desmond. That is my opinion to it all. Now, there are certainly positives. You know, we have spoke about the success that Celtic have seen. Domestically, we have been unmovable for the best part of 20 years. Um, but, but when it comes to just us progressing, I, I don't want to see a stagnant. I don't want to see us being stuck in the same position. I've, I've seen a point, interesting, interestingly, earlier that someone made on Twitter about Giacomakis and this contract situation. Um, are we going to see the return of contractual situations that are stubborn on Celtic's behalf? Transfer situations which are stubborn on Celtic's behalf. Now, this is where you've got to ask yourself the question... <clears throat> How big an influence will Peter Lawwell have at the club? Now, I think that most people have been very impressed with the way that Michael Nicholson has, has handled the, the role of CEO. We've, we've moved forward in a way that I think a lot of people didn't expect. We've, we've been back the manager, and that's been good. So will, will Peter Lawwell even have that much of a say in this chairman role? Now, I've seen Ryan McGinley make a point earlier, and I want to bring up his. Ryan McGinley made a point saying, non-executive is the all-important phrase for me. I'm not too concerned with it. Lowell has been instrumental in us securing Ange too. Now, I'm going to take away the instrumental and Ange part because that's not what I'm relevant to what I'm saying just now, but the, the non-executive part of it. Will he have as big a say as what he used to do at this club? That will remain to be seen. I guess there's not much we can do about it as fans now. Um, people will voice their discontent. People will... Um, We'll look forward to see what happens, but that's my opinion, um, and that's my thoughts on, on on regards to him being appointed in the, in the chairman role. I'm hoping that it doesn't halt any of the evolution we've seen at Celtic over the past year and a half, um, and I don't want to see us returning to, to the same old problems that have kept us in the dark for so long. So, yes, anyway, let's get your guys' opinions for sort of... 10 15 minutes on on this stream um because i wanted to bring on um, react to your guys thoughts and talk about your guys opinions in relation to, to peter lawwell being appointed as as chairman of the the club um it's only it feels like you know if vince mcmahon was to come back to the wwe in like a year's time after everything that's happened you know what i mean that sort of vibe and i don't think they would do that as a company i don't think celtic should have done that as a company Weird comparing the WWE to, to Celtic right enough. Anyway, let's 
see what we're saying and I'm, I'm going to pull up comments from, from both sides so we've got jim for example jim saying i've been going to parkhead for 60 years and peter is the best we've had and do you know what i can understand that because I, i've grown my, my dad's 75 so i've heard all the stories and my dad has seen some absolute shit from the 50s to the 90s to everything in between he's he's watched as people have ran the club and been involved in the board which have done far dirtier to celtic and left us in situations that you know you, you, you just go back to the 90s as the prime example you know we, we were left in a position which could have seen celtic go to the wall we didn't go to the wall and peter lawwell was somebody who's came in and in, in, in the space of t you know 10 years later and, and changed sort of everything and, and and i can understand why he would be the best over the past 60 years my my point that i want to try and, and re-emphasize i want to emphasize heavily my problem isn't exactly on it being peter lawwell for the, the typical Peter Lawwell reasons, although that does annoy me a bit. It's just because I want to see us move forward. Yeah, he might have been the best in 60 years, but you can do better over 70 years. You can do better over 80 years. We should look for fresh options. We should look for change. We should keep commanding to do better. And I don't think that Peter Lawwell suggests that. I don't think that the appointment of him says that, oh yeah, we want, to, we want to go a step further. It's like, no, we're steady. You know, we're steady and we're going to stay steady. Why not go further? Why not get someone better, someone younger, someone with fresher ideas? That's where my problem lies the most. And I understand that people are happy with the job that he's done in the past and you're entitled to that. And, and there's no denying that he has done in certain areas a fantastic job. But to just remain with the same all the time, it's not healthy. I think that you've got to try things. Um... DM McDonald, as long as he keeps his nose well out of all transfer deals and contract negotiations, that's all that matters. Absolutely. I hope that he doesn't have a massive say in the financial, or not, not so much he'll have a say in the financial situation, but transfer finances and, and transfer dealings and negotiations. Um, I would find it hard to believe that he won't have some form of influence though. Ange seems happy. That might be good enough for folk though. I agree, fella, but the board we had for decades was deplorable at best um let's see what else hope it does not affect the relationship with Ange. well Ange seems happy so far we just need to hope that continues to be the case we know we've seen brendan rogers walk away from the club for apparently reasons that he thought that the club weren't moving forward that was what he, he, he said was the reason he left he went on to a club that he thought he could you know take a step further that he wasn't going to make it celtic i hope that doesn't drive Ange to thinking the same thing over the next year or two but time will tell um as the saying goes feels like the perfect time to capitalize on rangers failings but instead we are moving here we go Mo uh, feels like the perfect time to capitalize on what's happening on the other side of the city and instead of moving forwards we're going backwards or at least sideways sideways seems like a very good way to put it i agree with that elliot like i think that backwards is going to be the word for most and, and in some in, in a lot of capacities it is backwards but sideways is a perfect way to say it because we know that there is success in, in what law was done at points of the club and areas of the club so maybe it is sideways but like i want to see us move up the fucking ladder you know i want to see us do better um do you think lawwell despite the domestic success held us back as well as other board members absolutely there's no doubt about it and I've, I've, if you've missed the start of the stream i've touched on that there is no denying that in certain areas of this football club we have been held back specifically and the main one is U the european stage we've made no progression no progression over the past 20 years in europe you can say all you like about making the champions league group stage this year that should be the bare minimum for celtic champions league group stage should be the bare minimum for celtic every year we have not moved beyond that since 2003. That's the cold hard facts. You can try and argue all you like, but it's true. We have been stagnant. We made a couple of last 16s in the Champions League. Didn't win. Uh, hard to win. But, you know, what, two or three times over the space of 20 years? Is that good enough? No, absolutely not. And a big part of that has been down to what we, we back our, our managers with. Um... Feels uh, I've, I've pulled up Elliot's already. Progression is key. I had a debate with someone saying Ralston is all we need in SPL is our level. So small minded, we need investment. Exactly. Nothing. Not exactly pull Ralston into all of it, but it's it is just it's an equivalent, isn't it? Like you should always. And I've made this point time and time again. I made this point on the Open Goal Fan Forum to to, to James McFadden and the, the rest of the guys there. You shouldn't be stagnant in anywhere. No matter what you're looking to do, whether it be a chairman, a manager, a goalkeeper, a striker, a fucking caretaker, what a team man, you should always be looking to do better whenever the opportunity is there. 
That's the whole point in progressing instead of remaining stagnant. And that's the point I'm trying to drill through. Uh, that's, that's, that, you know, I can't reiterate that enough. Um, not a fan of Lowell coming back. We should be looking into the future, not the past. Um, let's see what else. Can I say I'm surprised, if I'm honest? He's good at making money, and that's fair enough, but let's hope he doesn't tighten the budget. Um, what else? We've got Mick. What I don't really get is why the club would do this. We have a great relationship with the club and the manager. Seen him outside Parkhead a few months ago and was getting dogs abuse. It's stupid. There's one thing that I've not touched on in this stream. The relationship with the fans. The relationship with Peter Lawwell is not good. I know there's people watching this who like Peter Lawwell, but in terms of the, the, the wide support of Celtic, the vast majority do not lie in a good position with Peter Lawwell. At a time where everything seems perfect and nice and lovely at the club, to make this appointment kind of feels like a bit of a boot in the boys, really. It does, a wee bit, because it kind of makes us go, hmm still the same old isn't it you know what i mean so that is that is a point of it this is that is a point of it lawwell gave us a domestic a decade of domestic dominance while avoiding the fate of sevco nine out of ten titles a year isn't enough for a newbie of spoiled bat fair weather fans i'm not a fair weather fan come on this is i, I can understand I, and i don't think it's a terrible opinion to have. i'm not saying you're not allowed to like lawwell but i think that the people who don't like lawwell are well within their rights to say no Yes, winning a 9 out of 10 titles, it was marvellous, it was fantastic, fair play to everybody involved in that process. Do you know what I do better? Is that it? Is that, is that, is that it for you? As long as, we, as long as we win the league, that's okay. I don't want to be left behind in football for much longer. I want to see Celtic do better, I want to go on European trips to the later stages of competitions. As difficult as it is, you need the right people at the helm of the club to drive that forward. And the question is, is the right man for it, Peter Lawwell? Um, I can see Anne's leaving. Wow. I personally think Lawwell's return as chairman is great for the club. He's a Celtic man and knows the club inside out. Heel, heel. Feels like it's one of those ones. It's not a serious comment. But if it is, fair enough. Um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we should have learned from the 2021 20, campaign that the board does not care about the fans' opinions. And I think that there may have been a bigger reason you, uh, you know who never showed up to another AGM. There's obviously a reason he doesn't show up to the AGMs. Because when he's asked to his face to get the money out and get his dip his hand in his pocket, he's not got the balls to turn out to the fans and say no. But anyway, um, let's see. What is the poll from saying? So 20, this is the poll. So 26% of your poll are happy with his return. It's far from unanimous. Wasn't aiming my comment at you specifically. It's okay, it's fine. You can aim it at me if you like. I'm not, I, I respect your opinion as well. So you've brought up the poll. So I do want to have a look at the poll before we go off. So we only did have 140 voters. It doesn't represent the the, 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 the whole of the Celtic support. But just, just to clarify, um, in our poll of 140 voters, 73% said they aren't happy about the return of Peter Lawwell. Um... Yeah, it's not far from you. It's it's far from unanimous. You know, it's not a blowout. Ninety nine percent, everybody's on. But as I said, I think we are looking at the majority of the Celtic support sharing the same opinion, and it's not just the younger guys. It's not just the new breed of support, or as Neil Lennon once said, it, it it does resonate throughout a lot of people. I've spoke to so many people at Celtic Park who are ages of 50, 60, 70 years of age, who have agreed with a lot of my opinions in the past. It is. It's simply down to your own opinion, um, and everybody's entitled to theirs. But anyway, that is where I'm going to leave off tonight. There is your news for this evening, 25 minutes, that's not bad. So, yeah, we'll be back with a podcast soon. We'll be back with more content to the channel over the coming weeks as the football slowly and surely returns. But I'm going to leave it there for this evening. I hope you all enjoy your Friday night. I hope you have a belter, enjoy your weekend as well. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for all tuning in. Um, thank you for the donations and such as well. Have a good one. Peter Lawwell's back. Hooray.